a 56 year old uh, male presented to the clinic with the uh, features of multiple myeloma with bone, bone disease, anemia, um, and a slightly low platelet count. Uh, his kidney function uh, was fine. Uh, following staging, he came out as being ISS2, and uh, the treatment regimen that was chosen was uh, Revlimid, Velcade, and Dexamethasone. Uh, he had a good response to this, and after five cycles, uh, underwent stem cell harvest. There was a good harvest, and then he sub subsequently underwent a 200 milligram per meter squared melphalan autologous stem cell transplant, which he tolerated well and went into a complete clinical remission, which was maintained for some years. The patient presented to us in this case is really receiving optimal therapy, and I think the majority of centers now have moved to a triplet-based induction regimen, particularly with a combination of bortezomib, lenolidomide, and dexamethasone. Um, uh, there could be a variation in this particular case that I think will be relevant, and that is that the person has a translocation between chromosomes 14 and 16. Uh, the T14-16 remains one of the most challenging subtypes of myeloma for treatment. And while I see some patients who have done very well with 1416, uh, there are many cases that are quite uh, challenging. And according to some of the guidelines, including the one we have at the Mayo Clinic, a patient like this could be considered for induction therapy based on carfilzomib, so something like carfilzomib, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone. However, I think anyone would agree this is a standard induction regimen. I think it's optimally positioned to, to produce that first response in patient anticipating a subsequent stem cell transplant. A patient with uh, the 1416, uh, which is a subset of myeloma that has more high risk cases within it, uh, would undoubtedly have led to me using maintenance, uh, Revlimid maintenance, um, would likely have been beneficial because there's evidence saying it's active in high risk and low risk disease. Personally, I probably would have had him on a, a combination of maintenance, either with Valcade or if you were certain he had high risk, using um, daratumumab in combination would potentially have been useful. All of the, the data that's come out recently for all of the agents, so for imid drugs, for proteasome inhibitors, um, including carfilzomib, for um, monoclonal antibodies suggests that there's a therapeutic benefit from longer term exposure. So it's no longer de rigueur to just give six cycles and stop. It's important to get people to stay on treatment well out beyond a year and sometimes uh, out beyond two to three years. And that gives you the best, most durable responses and the best long term outcomes. In this case, we have a young patient that has high-risk multiple myeloma. They receive standard induction therapy and an autologous stem cell transplant. And in fact, at that point in time, it would be common and it would be standard of care for us to put them on maintenance-based therapy. There is some controversy in terms of high-risk disease. What is the best therapy? There was a recent randomized trial from the UK that certainly showed a benefit to lenalidomide-based maintenance therapy, but there's other studies and other trials that suggest that proteasome inhibitors might be a better choice in patients that have high-risk disease. My personal practice is I usually do combined therapy, and combined therapy with um, either lenalidomide, bortezomib, and dexamethasone as consolidation post-transplant and maintenance at a little lower doses, or carfilzomib, lenalidomide, dexamethasone, as consolidation therapy or maintenance post-therapy. And I think that is um, the most effective strategy for patients that have high-risk disease, like the patient in this case.